Hi everyone, I'm Michael Hines, and we're here in Marrakesh, Morocco. Now over the next few episodes, I'm going to give you a tour of this country. We're going to go to Casablanca, Marrakesh, the Atlas Mountains, the Sahara Desert, Fez, Chepchaouen, and more. Now although I've traveled all over the world, I've actually never made a travel vlog before. So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. Now I'll give you some tips on how to travel through Morocco affordably. We'll visit some of the sites that were frequented by famed con artist Anna Delvey, and we might get some World Cup surprises along the way. Come along with me on episode one as we travel to Casablanca. I take the subway from Brooklyn to Lower Manhattan's World Trade Center. Then I get on the PATH train to Newark's Penn Station. At Penn Station, I take the New Jersey Transit train to the airport, and then the air train to the terminal. Four trains. So today we're flying from Newark Airport uh, near New York City to Casablanca, Morocco, but we're going via Montreal, Canada. Just coming into Newark Airport here. Let's go check out the United Lounge. The United Club at Newark Airport is United's newest and most spacious lounge in their entire world route network. It sort of feels like a fancy co-working space inside. The lounge features big windows that bring in lots of light and views of the tarmac. This lounge also features United's first barista service, so I grab myself a latte. A variety of food options are available, like fruits, sandwiches, and an extensive salad bar. There is also a full bar service. I always go for the old-fashioned. United's new lounge has these incredible shower suites, uh, complete with Saks Fifth Avenue branded uh, towels. I, I can't take you with me into this part, so see you later. Fresh and clean. Getting there. Okay, I'm having a hair moment here. Now I'll just be flying United on a short hop up to Montreal. That's where Air Canada offers a direct connection between the culturally French cities of Montreal and Casablanca. Royal Air Maroc also offers a direct flight between North America at JFK Airport to Casablanca. My Star Alliance Gold status also gets me into here, the Air Canada Maple Leaf Lounge. It's not that dissimilar from the United Lounge back in Newark. I'm not going to lie, the shower suite at the Air Canada Lounge is a little bit more classy than the one at the United Club. And yes, I took two totally unnecessary showers at two different airports just for the footage. Now, these praying Muslim men were the sign that I had arrived at my gate for the flight to Casablanca. Tonight, I'll be flying on Air Canada's beautiful 787 Dreamliner. 
Now these are some of the most modern and fuel efficient planes available in the sky. Now as this is budget travel, I'm just traveling in coach, which is in a 333 configuration. You'll note the fairly large windows and entertainment screens available on the Dreamliner. The meal was basic, but filling. Now, while I change into my overnight pajamas, let me tell you about cost. I paid about $650 to fly in early December, but you can use sites like secretflyer.com to find better deals. You'll see that the winter of 2023 featured some $470 flights, such as via TAP Portugal. Okay, let's get to Casablanca. Casablanca Airport has many car rental companies to choose from. I was able to get this four-door car for $240 for eight days, or about $30 a day. It's important to note any dents and dings when traveling overseas, as car rental companies are usually more persnickety about this than in the United States. I'm driving from the airport straight into Casablanca, to see the one major tourist site worth seeing there. I'm standing here at the Hassan II Mosque. It's one of the biggest mosques in the world with one of the tallest minarets. That's actually more than 60 stories tall. And although we're close to the Sahara Desert, it's actually raining here on the Atlantic coast of Morocco today. The Hassan II Mosque is located on a dramatic perch over the Atlantic Ocean. Frequent travelers will know that most mosques only permit admittance to followers of the Islamic faith. But many countries in the Islamic world build one or two mosques as a large national project, which are often accessible by tourists. The Hassan II Mosque fills that role for Morocco. So this is actually the third largest mosque in the world. This interior space holds 25,000 people. And then during Ramadan, they can host another 80,000 on the outside courtyards. The space feels unbelievably vast. If you've been to the Vatican, it's pretty similar to St. Peter's Cathedral. Washing before prayer is an important part of the Islamic tradition. So we were eventually led down these stairs to see the ablution area, where thousands of prayers can wash before attending services in the mosque above. In spite of the mystique and romance of the 1941 film of the same name, Casablanca is not much of a tourist city. It's quite modern, in fact. But you can visit this, Rick's Cafe, a contemporary restaurant and bar designed to evoke the 1941 film. There was no impromptu performance of Le Marseillais tonight. Well, that's going to wrap it up for Casablanca, but join me on episode two as we dive deeper into Morocco. I'll see you in Marrakesh. <laughs>